What's the outlook for Las Vegas new home builds in 2021? We're speaking with Nicole Bloom of Richmond American Homes to find out. I'm David Grana, and this is Real Talk. Nicole Bloom, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Of course, Dave. It's always great to chat with you. So, Nicole, how long have you been here in the Las Vegas uh, market? So this time around, 25 years, I actually grew up here, went to junior high and high school here, and I have been back since 1995. So just, just 25 years, all of them in home building since I came back here in 95. All right. So as, cl- as close to native as you can get here in Las Vegas. Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Nicole, when, when the pandemic hit uh, last year, I remember, you know, scary times. We're almost approaching that one year mark uh, as we get there. Um, as we got into lockdown, uh, what were your thoughts uh, as it relates to the, the home building industry? W- what did you think uh, when we started shutting down casinos, et cetera, how it was going to affect uh, your business? Um, You know, I think the thing with this was that it was so extreme um, versus obviously having worked through the market crash um, previously, that was a gradual, right? That was a gradual change. Um, This was what I um, kind of call like, it was like you were running and then all of a sudden the ground just came out from underneath you. You went, you went off a cliff, right? And so I think it got really scary really quick, obviously, for all the industries. Um, For us, because the unemployment was so quickly, um, drastically changed, that we were really scared about what was going to be. And I think, you know, because of that, you saw builders that, you know, pretty quickly paused their land purchases. Um, You saw a cancellation skyrocket. You saw... um, you know, furloughs, most of us builders, we furloughed or laid off 25 to 30% of our folks also pretty quickly. Um, and I think that was, um, you know, with all the business closures and certainly driving down the strip and seeing, you know, casinos warded up and things like that. I think the thought was that this was going to be scary for a really long time. How did that contrast with what actually happened uh, in 2020 <laughs> in, the, in the new home build uh, market? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, in, in, I think the, the, the contrast of what happened was kind of, I think, remarkable is the only word that comes to mind. In talking to folks that I work for who have been in the home building industry for a lot longer than me, you know, 40 plus years, um, you know, I think that the thought was that this is going to be, you know, pretty much throughout the, the, the year of 2020, that this was gonna be tough. And so by contrast, what happened was when you started seeing sales returning in about 90 days, because March, April, and May essentially were, you know, the kind of where you saw everything get really, really tough with low gross sales and high cancellations. Um, so the fact that in June, you started seeing sales coming back and then by July, August, and September, it actually felt like spring selling season because in in essence, that spring selling season kind of got pushed back into the year. Um, Like I said, it was really nothing short of remarkable. And even throughout the remainder of 2020 with our our unemployment, I mean, what we were at a high of 30% unemployment in Clark County, even with the double digit team unemployment that we still have, um, again, I think through the rest of the year, by contrast, it was still pretty shocking to see that people were out buying houses um, to the fact where we, we really had to, you know, manage because of all the restrictions, we really had to manage, like how many people were even allowed to be in our models. And, you know, and, and I would have never thought that that is where we would be three months after, you know, kind of that initial shutdown in March. What's, what's been the biggest driver, what have been the biggest drivers in the market right now that has, um, allowed us to see this, this, huge demand uh, for homes, uh, particularly new homes? It's a great question. And I'll I'll tell you, it was a question that I actually um, had to answer for my um, 
corporate folks who are in a different state. And, you know, that was a question of how, you know, who is buying and why, why are they buying? So for us, um, and I think this is probably true pretty much across the board, but for us, there was really three major drivers. Um, and, you know, I, I, as we started seeing sales pick up, I actually sat and surveyed our sales uh, professionals on where are these folks coming from? All the, all these buyers for multiple months talked to me about where they were coming from. So first and foremost, not surprisingly was rates. Obviously we are in this time of historically low rates. Um, and so for those folks that were able to buy, I think that was the number one reason that we heard over and over again is if they were able to buy, people were very cognizant of the extraordinary purchasing power that they have right now um, with rates, you know, sometimes being in the twos, um, it was as close to free money as what you're going to get, right? So that was so that was sort of first and foremost was the rates. Second thing was while folks were in their house for three months, um, I think there was some people that were like, maybe this isn't where I want my long-term living situation to be. So, so the second thing we heard a lot was I either wanted a bigger house or I was in an apartment and maybe I decided I wanted to buy instead or I was going to rehab, but in, you know, instead of that, I'm gonna put that money into a down payment and, and, and do a new house. So I think regardless, you had a lot of people that took stock of what their living situation was and just went, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for something new. Um, and then the last thing that was really the big driver was in migration. So not surprisingly, you know, highest percentage of folks that were coming into the state were from California. But we did continue to see a lot of people coming from Midwest and Eastern part of the United States where, you know, the, the weather is obviously a lot harsher. And we've seen that over the last several years. So, you know, I think one of the great things about Vegas to me is that it doesn't necessarily feel like a city of 2.7 million people, right? Like, I feel like compared to other cities, maybe um, it's easy to get around town. You've got, I mean, everything, right? You've got the best shopping, the best restaurants, the best entertainment, we have sports now. So you really get all the benefits of a big city that we've seen folks, and this has obviously been in the news, we've seen folks that are kind of like, I'm going to maybe get out of that urban, you know, really dense area and kind of go out a little bit. And so I think Vegas sort of provides that it, it it's got a, a big population, but doesn't necessarily feel the same as some towns that would have you know, the, the same size of population as what we have here. So that was really what we saw as far as the, the main drivers for, for why folks were able to purchase. Now that, that last point that you make, um, it's, it, it's absolutely true, um, at least from what we've been seeing uh, in discussions with uh, people that have migrated to Nevada. But it's also an interesting contrast. We, we have a bit of a, of a land shortage here. So now we're having to make these footprints a bit, a bit smaller. So it's, it's interesting. You're trying to, you're bringing people in because of a lower population density, yeah. but it seems like it's, it, that's amongst the challenges right now with new builds is the density. Um, can you talk yeah. a little bit about that and also what other challenges you're kind of, you're facing as, as we continue on through, through 2021? Yeah, I mean, land is is definitely, I think, available land. Let's talk about that, because I think whenever I talk to folks about the the um, lack of available land, they're like, what are you talking about? There's dirt everywhere, right, in Vegas? But I think it's the, the lack of available land that's maybe not owned by BLM and things like that. So, you know, to me, there's a couple huge challenges that we have from a home building industry. And this is regardless of COVID, no COVID, but... Um, it rings true for both. So the first is what you is really kind of speaks to what you said, which is how do we provide affordable housing? Um, we know that the income in Las Vegas does not necessarily match the rate in which prices can escalate. So how do we provide affordable housing? And the two biggest drivers for builders that um, you know challenges us is land prices, uh, as we said, and, and land availability, and then hard costs, and, and how do we build the house and, and labor costs. And you know, I think one thing that obviously I'm always looking at is how expensive it is to buy a house. And when you look at a year ago, um, it's costing us about 40% more to buy lumber and frame a home than it did just one year ago. It's, it's about 40% more now. And so you know, where does that money go? generally it's going to go to the sales prices. And so, you know, I think you, 
that's a big challenge. And then again, with the land being a premium in the Valley, we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months, some pretty significant increases in land prices as well. And listen, it's supply and demand, right? So um, there's not a ton of available land and there's a bunch of demand for it. So we've seen land values go up. So that, that, that combination of all those things, I think is, is a big challenge. The second big challenge, I think that just in general that we face is who is actually going to build the homes for the folks that want to, to buy brand new homes. And that might sound silly when we have this really, really high unemployment rate, but the fact remains that if you drive through any average new home site and you look at the folks that are building homes, they are not young. These are not young people that are out swinging hammers and roofing and drywalling and things like that. And so, you know, I think one of the things that we have to really focus on is, is who the future labor force is for us as an industry. Um, you know, anybody out there that has kids that are getting ready to go to college, which I'm in that, in that um, boat, how many folks are telling their kids, like, you should go be a plumber or you should be a drywaller. Uh, you know, so I, I think those are not conversations that most people probably have with their kids. But the, the reality is that, you know, there is a huge demand for trade based employment. And frankly, there's a great uh, potential to make money. Um, these are really, really good paying jobs. Um, and so as builders, you know, I think we really have to focus on that. One way that the home building community in Vegas that is coming together on that is through our home builders associations, through the Southern Nevada Home Builders Association. You know, we have all this workforce development. Um, however, with the pandemic, we can't have groups of people. Um, and so we, over the last uh, couple months, have launched an SNHBA Learn online portal where people can, without actually being physically in the classroom, go on and for free, start gaining um, entry level knowledge of trade skills. And so I think, you know, the builders in general are committed to growing our future workforce. But, you know, those two things to me are kind of the things that keep me up at night. It's how am I going to give affordable housing to people and, and who is going to build that home? So th those are to me two of our biggest challenges. Um, in, in, in the recent um, reports that I've seen, in fact, today was today being one of them, I've seen that home, some home builders have uh, gone or decided to go into the rental business. So SFRs, single family uh, residences, but to be rented out. Uh, is, this, is this a trend that you see other builders, uh, that, you see, that you see builders kind of get, getting into this particular marketplace? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got a couple specific folks that just build um, new residential for rent um, that are becoming, uh, some of them were maybe didn't have as big of a stronghold in Vegas um, up until the last year or so. So you've got a couple of those folks and then yeah, you're, you're definitely gonna continue to see traditional um, home builders that are gonna get into um, you know, the, the, rental, uh, the rental side of things as well. Obviously it's really competitive, rents are escalating and in a lot of cases, you can get you know more for rent than you can when you when you buy a house. So yeah, I think that definitely is something that we'll see continue as a trend. And, and we've seen a, a trend of of uh, demand is is through the roof in the single family residential market. Um, prices uh, have have gone up uh, consistently uh, since about. I think May, June is really when things really started to, uh, to, to elevate. And, and December, we closed out um, median uh, home price at $345,000, uh, which is, I, I think that's a historic high for Vegas as far as median prices. What's, what is the, what's the, uh, the tactic you're using when it comes to builds to be able to provide something that is desirable and also affordable? How are the footprints kind of changing and, and, and are we seeing sort of more vertical um, uh, properties out there? Um, you know, you, yes, the short answer is yes, you are. Um, for us, we still really try to concentrate on, on having a large part of our business be through single stories because we feel like people are staying in their homes longer. So for us, that is still a big foothold for us is affordable single stories in like the 1700 to 1900 square foot range. But, um, you know, the fact remains a single story house takes up more land, obviously, than a two story does. 
Um, you know, there, there's some, you see some three stories here and there, but more what you're, what you see and what I think is going to continue to be a huge part of the market. We've seen it increase by some pretty significant numbers over the last 24 months is single family attached homes. Um, you have some builders that do condos or townhomes. Um, uh, for us, that, that's not something that we currently do, but what, but what we do, and I think what we're going to continue to concentrate on is look for new, really cool um, modern designs for single family attached homes. So we have, for instance, our urban duplexes, which um, I think you'd be hard pressed when, when somebody walks those to uh, notice that you're in an attached house, except for that there's not a window in the stairwell. Um, but there, there's lots of windows, really cool elevations, very modern, very um, fresh. And, um, and so I think we're looking at introducing a second product line for attached housing. And a lot of the builders are doing uh, duplexes and triplexes. And I think that is one avenue to, to get uh, folks home ownership who, you know, maybe they're not quite ready for uh, financially for an, a detached house. But um, I think this is going to be something it's, again, it's been a really big driver in the market the last 24 months we've seen, um, you know, really from, from no market share upwards of, I think right now there's maybe in the Valley only two or three builders that don't have some sort of attached product right now. And, I, and I've been to your uh, Chicago and Boston uh, models up in Summerlin. Uh, they are attached, but they're absolutely beautiful, very spacious. I mean, it did not feel like an attached product at all. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're really, really proud of those. We, we have those right now in Cadence and in Lake Las Vegas and in Summerlin. Um, and they are just, I think, some of the coolest product that we've done. Uh, you know, I've, I've been with uh, Richmond American about 21 years, and they're one of the coolest products, I think, that we've ever done. Um, and, you know, I think the thing that surprised me about those, and, and you know, I, I would imagine my fellow uh, home builders see this too, is the, the span of buyers that are purchasing out there. We've had empty nesters and folks that are retired. We've had, you know, single people, we've had, um, you know, married couples, folks are starting out maybe with the family there. It's, they really do, um, uh, provide a really great home opportunity for a bunch of different, uh, buyers in the market. Now, last question for you, Nicole, this is, uh, where you get to whip out your crystal ball. Um, <laughs> I, di I didn't pay the warranty on mine. So mine is a bit defunct, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, What's the general consensus that you you kind of feeling uh, with with your your industry peers about the outlook for new home building uh, in Las Vegas, both short term and kind of medium term? So let's say the next next three years out. What's what's the feel out there? You know, I, mean, I think the general outlook is really positive. Um, you know, there's a lot of confidence in the market. Um, you know, certainly. Right now, the confidence for new homes is really being driven by demand. And, uh, you know, in Las Vegas right now, obviously, resale is extremely, extremely restricted as far as what's available. Um, but I think that everybody is aware that, you know, the rates are very, very low right now. We need to continue to do everything we can to ensure that we're offering as affordable a product as possible in the event that they're um, is an inevitable, um, you know, increase at rates at some point. Um, so I think, you know, for me personally, my biggest focus is, is on how to provide affordable um, housing. Again, I think that trend of the attached product is going to, you know, keep going to try to fill that need. The other, you know, the other thing that I do um, feel like is probably going to be out there is, is, you, you see here and there builders dipping their toe into some of these satellite markets, whether it's, you know, Grump or Mesquite or Logandale or Overton or, um, you know, any of these kind of um, satellite areas that we have. And I do think that that potentially will increase, you know, based on the in-migration, because we've got folks coming into town who for them driving an hour, an hour and a half is, is really no big deal. Especially um, Californians. Yeah, ex exactly. And so, you know, I think you've got some of these outlying areas where the consideration for lower land uh, pricing is really going to, I think, potentially be a driver to have some folks taking a look at some of these areas 
also with that thought process of not everybody maybe wants to be totally urban and they want to kind of, you know, be outside of the actual city proper. Um, so, you know, I think that that is something that I think, but, you know, generally, I, I think, you know, the next three to five years, we feel pretty, pretty darn positive about it. You know, the great thing about Vegas to me, and like I said, I, I, I've lived here the majority of my life. The great thing about Las Vegas to me is that we are such a resilient town, right? And I really believe it's such a terrific place to live. It's a great place to grow up. I'm raising my family now here. And, and, you know, for me, it's hard for me to imagine living someplace else, especially if you just, you know, kind of go out in the evening and you see all the fantastic, every time I go down the strip, I'm always reminded of like, man, we just live in such a cool place, you know, such a cool place to live. Um, so I, I think uh, as, as long as, you know, as, as us as builders, as long as we keep our focus on trying to provide product to as many folks um, as we possibly can um, through affordability, I think, you know, that I, I would say the general outlook is really, really positive uh, for the foreseeable future. Well, you're doing a great job. I love your product. I, I've been to a number of your sites uh, and, uh, and keep it up. I appreciate that so much. Oh, keep it up. We, we always appreciate your, you visiting and, and um, you know, uh, just love the fact that you, you take the time to go out and look at the product and give us feedback. That's, that's you know, something that is invaluable to us. I think, I think I'm excited for, for the future of Richmond American Homes and also for the future of new home builders here in Las Vegas. Uh, I think the future is definitely, uh, definitely going to look bright. Uh, got a few hurdles to overcome, but we'll, we'll get there. We do all the time. Every year there's something, just some years are a little bit harder than others. <laughs> I feel like if we could, if we made it through last year, um, you know, gosh, just making it through just simply the safety protocols of last year, doing business through the safety protocols of last year, I feel like, you know, um, we're kind of able to get through anything after that. So I, I would agree with you. I'm really excited to see what's ahead for um, our industry and for us as a company. Nicole Bloom, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, David. So nice chatting with you. Likewise. If you enjoyed this interview, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe.